came down, I would say about five or so minutes ago. Uh, Phil's president of baseball operations, David Dombrowski, announced changes today to the team's baseball ops department effective immediately. Brian Minitti and Scott Provrock, who uh, you know we've had on the show for so many years, will no longer serve as assistant GM. Both will serve as consultants for the 2022 season. Uh, Josh Bonifay will no longer serve as director of player development. He has been offered a professional scouting position for the 2022 season. Now, you might not think this is major breaking news, but it tells you that the Phillies... There, there, there's a little bit of a cultural change, a little shift, if you will. And if you look at this season as a whole, and this is something that I think has plagued the Phillies for years now, was that void, lack of depth, assets, young talent, and young arms in their farm system. And this is a huge make-or-break week if you are a Phils fan. There is absolutely no bones about it. This is it. Now you've come into this critical juncture, this critical stretch, if you're a Phils fan. Because now you got an opportunity to make up ground against the Atlanta Braves. You know the Braves are sitting pretty, for the most part right now, 68 and 57, four and a half up on the Phils. They've won nine out of their last 10. Now they stubbed their toe to the Yankees, but everyone's been losing to the Yankees. That series continues. And for the Philadelphia Phillies, a huge series. You know, the Phillies can actually help out the Yanks, and the Yanks can help out the Phillies. Go figure. Because the Phillies have Tampa Bay the front runners in the AL East. That series starts tonight, 7.05 first pitch at the ballpark. So this is a huge week. Huge week. Listen, like I said, Yanks are red hot. For the Braves, it's a more challenging stretch of games remaining on their schedule. You've got to finish with the Dodgers. 17-20 against the Rocks, Nationals, Marlins, and D-backs. And unlike the Phillies... The Braves have pretty much gone out and beaten the teams that they have to beat. You look at their combined record against those opponents, 31-18 and 18 against the six worst teams in the NL. And this has been the bugaboo for the Philadelphia Phillies for years. They cannot beat bad teams compared to the Phillies. That stretch, that record, 22-20. and 20. So you got the two games against the AL best Tampa Berets tonight, tomorrow. Then you have a four-game set against the NL Worst Diamondbacks. And then three on the road against the Nats, who, if you look at their starting pitching, it's one of the worst in the bigs. Second highest ERA in the NL, 5.88. So they have an opportunity to inject a little life, to salvage their season. And they're going to need that offense to come alive. They're going to need, and we know who we know who I'm talking about. I think it's pretty clear what players need to step up for the Philadelphia Phillies, because you can ill afford, ill afford, to shuffle and alternate wins and losses. You're four and a half back. You are still in shouting distance. You're still in shouting. That's all you wanted to be was five, six back with September. And you're right there. Because when September rolls around and they complete their three-game set against Washington, they have to still stay on the road, three against Miami, a team that's given them fits, three on the road against Milwaukee. You come back four against Colorado, three against Chicago. You're going to see the Mets who might be out of it. They're going to want to play spoilers a bad Baltimore team, a bad Pittsburgh team, and then maybe that series in late September decides the NL East. Who knows? Three against the Braves? 
And then you close the season three against Miami. But it's all right there. It's all right there. Now, look, you can't look ahead. You can't. And you're going to, you might look back at that Diamondback series and say, oh, you got to be kidding me. Phillies lost two out of three. Or I should say three in a row, pardon me. Three in a row. To a team that has gone, what, 21 and 62 in the preceding 83 games? Which, if you're a math guy, you want to bet they're losing three out of every four. You love that, again, Hoskins returns, boom, that's what you wanted. The bats came alive a little bit. McCutcheon coming back. This is good. Okay, fine. He struggled a little bit. Four for 39, 16, 17 Ks since he's come back from that knee injury in early August. But again, it starts tonight. It starts tonight, and you got to have it. You got to have it. So tonight, tomorrow, Suarez, Wheeler, your ace, you want to argue, uh, NL, Cy Young, you want to throw Harper in there, NL, MVP, so, so be it. That's fine. Wheeler has pitched well. He's pitched exceptionally well. 10 and 8 is not a sexy record. It's not. But he struck out close to 200. His ERA is 2.77, which is a career low. He's eating up, gobbling up a ton of innings, close to 170. He has been the reliable pitcher the Phillies have needed. He has. Now, has he been on the right side of some of these games, his last two outings? No. They scored one run against Cincinnati, and they scored two runs against Arizona. But look at his line. He's pitched six and six two-thirds. He gave up runs, no doubt. But he's going to eat your innings, and that was coming off that nine-game brilliant performance, a nine-inning brilliant performance, that shutout, three-nothing shutout against the Mets. When it seemed like everything, we're talking 16, 17 days ago, everything was going right for the Philadelphia Phillies in the midst of that eight-game winning streak. And then they proceeded to just kind of go in the tank. They lost two or three to Dodgers, two or three to Cincinnati. They got swept by Arizona. It, it, it has not been a good couple, mo- uh, couple weeks for the Philadelphia Phillies. But you can turn it around. You are in shouting distance. That's all you can ask for. And as a Yank fan, go out and take care of Tampa Bay because look what the Yankees are doing now, folks. I mean, break up the Yanks, back up the bus. It's bad enough I got to see Red Sox fans on Twitter still crying here or getting all giddy because they won one lousy game. Six and a half back, pals. Yanks have won 10 in a row. They're four back in Tampa Bay. Their offense has just been on another level. Okay, fine. You're beating up on bad teams, but that's what you do. That's what you do. And the Yankees went into that game against Atlanta, and they cooled them off. Stan with a little appearance for the Bronx Bombers. Not bad. Homer and drove in three. So Atlanta goes into that contest last night, winners of nine straight. Boom. Yankees, winners of nine straight. Boom, make it ten. They're red hot. They are flat out red hot. And we talk about this from a gambling standpoint. You ride these streaks. Eventually, it's going to end, no doubt. It's going to end. It just happens. You just you play the percentages. Is it going to be tonight? Who knows? But they have positioned themselves not only to be a threat for that wild card, but a threat to the AL East and a threat to the Tampa Bay Rays. And they've done it with pitching, and they've done it with their offense. You know you're good when you're winning 2-1, two 2-0. One, two you know you're really good when you can outslug guys 7-5, 7-5, 7-1. 
nine to eight, six to two. So they're getting it done.